On today's Retro Tech Repair, we're going to be trying to fix this Gak and Soccer game that I bought spares or repair on eBay. So here we have this Gacken LCD card game. Gacken, of course, a business that I think is still going, making educational kits, that type of thing. But in fact, back in the day, Gacken made LCD games like this, VFD games, and a number of different things, often branded under the name of other companies. But this one carries the Gacken name itself. Not a great start to this one. The LCD is very dark. Looks to me like maybe this has been disassembled and reassembled in the past perhaps badly or incorrectly. And in fact, that's supported by the fact that some of these screws on the back have already been tampered with. Anyway, I don't think there are any batteries in it, so we'll slide some batteries in and we'll see if it does anything at all. Yeah, nothing whatsoever, unfortunately. Completely dead. Let's uh, see if we can reset it. Use my meter probe here just to yeah no nothing there at all or there and we'll check the voltage on these batteries really quickly as well just confirm that those are good one point five volts 1.58, so good batteries. Obviously the game itself is defective. So we'll go ahead and get it opened up. Let's see what's going on inside here. All right, so there is a piezo sounder soldered into the board there. We see a Gacken branded chip and two more screws holding the printed circuit assembly. I do notice now there is quite a lot of corrosion on these battery terminals, so that's a factor. Hmm, interesting. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect some power directly to those battery terminals there. So we're bypassing all this kind of cruddiness here and we'll see if the game springs into life. I have a couple of clip leads connected up to my bench power supply. That's set at just a little over three volts and we're gonna connect those up. Actually, that's the negative, I think. So this will be the positive here on the yellow and then the negative goes over here. And we'll take a look, see if the game is doing anything now. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but actually it is. There are some characters that have appeared on the display. It's all kind of frozen though. And pressing the buttons doesn't seem to do anything. And obviously this is kind of incorrect. It shouldn't be this dark grayed out color, I'm sure. I wonder if pressing reset does anything. Well, all clear kind of clears. Goes off when I press all clear but then just returns as it was before, if you can see that. Yeah. So I think the polarizer's in the wrong place, and I think perhaps if we correct that, there might be some improvements, but I don't know why we haven't got any sound. So let's dig a little deeper into this, I think. When the time comes, if we can get this going, we'll need to clean these battery terminals up. But uh, for now, let's just see what's going on with the display here. Looks like there's a little clip holding that in place. There we are. There we have our display little spacer either side of it there. And I'm just trying to see if this corrosion has spread to the printed circuit assembly or the printed circuit board. And I think 
probably it has. It looks like maybe some tracks in this area have been damaged. That could explain why we have no sound, of course, as well. We'll check for continuity on those. I'm not sure if they're significant or not at the moment. Anyway, rest of it seems okay. There is a polarizer in here, but I don't know if it's in the correct orientation. It looks to have moved. There are some plastic piece, pieces to hold it in place. So I think perhaps that was in the incorrect orientation. It does have a cutout, but I don't know how significant that is. I suppose if I knew which way it was supposed to go, that would help me get it back in that orientation. Display itself, mm, yeah, a little condensation or something deposited on it. I'm not sure that's in the best condition either. So it's a very kind of fragile arrangement, this, and it, it doesn't really seem to be holding these pieces in place, but it kind of get the impression that's what it's intended for. It just, just doesn't seem to do it very well. It occurred to me after filming the video that the reason that these plastic pieces might be so fiddly is because, in fact, they're supposed to have the liquid crystal display positioned between them. I think what's happened is the LCD display itself is kind of stuck to the printed circuit assembly, but that when it was originally assembled as new, that wouldn't have been the case. The LCD would have been a separate part, which would have sat between these two black plastic pieces, and in doing that, would have held everything in place until the printed circuit assembly was screwed back in, holding everything together. I don't know if it's worth kind of cleaning these battery contacts up now so they work and trying this polarizer in a different orientation but I am a little concerned that there is some damage on the front of this screen here so whether or not we'll have a full complement of players when we get the game going if we get the game going I'm not sure and of course we have this problem of potentially some damaged tracks here too So as you can see, I just cleaned the battery terminals up using an emery board. And at this opportunity, I'd just like to say thank you so much to all of my loyal subscribers. I do appreciate it's been a long time since I posted on the channel, and I'm very grateful for those of you that have stuck with it. I've had a lot going on recently and still got it going on to some degree, and so I really just haven't had the opportunity to post as often as I would like. But I will keep pressing along and there will be new content coming before too long, so please do stick around. Thanks so much for your loyal subscriptions. So at the moment we have the cutout towards this corner where the D-pad is. And uh, I guess we can flip it that way and that way. So we've probably got four options to try here. All right. No need to put the screws in for temporary operation. That's still got some dust in there. Still, it's quite dark. I doubt that's correct, but we'll pop some batteries in it again, see if it's doing what we think it should be doing. Those battery contacts are a bit intermittent. Try that, bend them out a little bit. Still no sound and still this kind of opaque display there, but it is now live if you like. So let's switch this, oh, it's gone off. Well, I think that might just be just be the poor battery contacts again. I probably need to clean those up, but we'll try switching this polarizer around in a different orientation. So this time we'll take our polarizer there, take our polarizer and we're gonna flip it through. 
180 degrees. We're going to keep the kind of cut out to this side, but we're going to put it in that way. We'll reassemble it, we'll try again. Oh, that's instantly looking better. You see, it looks more like a LCD game should. So yeah, that's uh, a lot more promising. Let's put the batteries in. Oh, yeah, great. You can see that the camera will focus. Come on, camera, focus. You can see now we've got a full complement of players. In fact, looks like all of the LCD is illuminated. Uh, yeah, I have these bits left over. Obviously, I forgot to put those in. If we just reset here. Hmm. It's not everything I was hoping for, I'll be honest. I mean, it's kind of better. Let's try holding everything together. Reset. 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 Alarm. Ha! <laughs> hey! Excellent! And sound too! Could it be that easy? It looks like maybe it was. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's get this cleaned up. We'll clean up the battery contacts, we'll put it all together, and we'll have a quick look at it. People are probably saying, use white vinegar in the comments now. And I have some, but I really don't like the smell of it. Better. Right. Final assembly. All right, that might be it. And in fact, as you can see, that was it. Now, I'm not ordinarily a big fan of soccer games, but actually I quite liked this one. You take on an attacking or defending role and the goal is drawn appropriately at the top or the bottom of the display. I think what I liked about it is that a lot of the LCD games from this era are kind of just a left, right, catching something or getting somewhere before something else does. And they're kind of three positions. Whereas in actual fact, this is quite complex gameplay for an LCD game of the era. And I can imagine it being more entertaining than those simple kind of left, right, catch, bounce the ball kind of games. So really, just a simple fix today, but that's the realities of buying games, spares or repair on eBay. Sometimes they're an easy fix, sometimes they're tricky, and sometimes I can't mend them at all. But on this occasion, I got lucky. Either way, it just about wraps it up for our Gakken LCD soccer card game today. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and that if you have, you'll consider hitting subscribe. And until next time, I'd just like to thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. <laughs> Oops. And, back. and off we come with the lid.